Hi everybody. Yes, version 3.6 is coming up soon. And this might be a good opportunity to highlight a bunch of new features we have been working on for the last couple of months. And one of them is a snapshots. So it's open right here. And snapshots is strongly related to working with media controllers. So I thought I would make a short video explaining both of these. And um, what better way to do this than to start with an empty project. So we double click on the background to jump out. Let me click file, new, and then, who must be unique. Let's try another attempt here. So here's our media example. And then we jump right in, select this and pin it as an output. And there you go, tool loves you. So working with MIDI controllers, how does it work? Um, so the simplest way is to uh, click on the background and press type MIDI input. And then um, you can connect this to any of these parameters here. And as soon as you actually press any of the control buttons or the sliders or knobs or whatnot, then this will be taught. So the teach trigger is now uh, by default it's on, now it's off, and we store like all these settings um, in this parameter. And of course, zero to one might be very uh, uh, low for a font size, but you can go here and adjust these accordingly. So let's clean this up a little bit. And then let's say you want to control something more complicated like the rotation or so. Uh, then, um, so this uh, operator here doesn't have a rotation, so we have to insert or transform, click on the output, and then we see that there is a rotation right here, and uh, yes, this uh, is the correct axis. So we can draw this out. Um, we once again, ah, first we have to split it into uh, three single values, and then we can take the Z value and once again, attach this to MIDI input and then move this again. We see it's wiggling a little bit there. And once again, we can go in here and uh, adjust the value range. So yeah, this is how we set up MIDI, set, uh, MIDI controllers. You might notice that uh, everything is smooth. And this is uh, because we are using damping by default. So if you don't like damping, then you can disable it here. And then you are stuck with the 127 steps that comes with a traditional MIDI controller. So we can just click on the parameter name here again to re-enable damping. And then you can find a sweet spot between um, latency and smooth movement. So um, these settings will be saved with, uh, with your patch. And... Uh, yeah, as long as the MIDI controller doesn't change its name, in this case, this ABC Mini here, uh, things will stay with after closing and reopening tool, which is very convenient. So then if we have uh, simple MIDI inputs, so how does this relate to presets and snapshots? So let's start by uh, recapulating, how do you say this? Remembering, reminding. Hmm. My English fails me. So let's talk about presets. Um, so sometimes uh, presets are super useful to figure out what a certain operator does. So let's quickly build a more complex, complex scene out of this one. So we uh, render this into a texture and then let's say we add a bunch of nodes. So uh, maybe we, uh, we also use, um, what can we do here? So let's use a displace. And then let's use a fractal noise. And um, maybe we set this, can we set this as our new output here? So the final one. Um, right now nothing is happening because um, this place is not active yet. So we can increase the size there. And maybe we move on by uh, adding a mirror repeat. I just love that effect. And um, maybe we also add a pixel sort. Sort pixel each here. And then once again, we can uh, add some parameters. So, um, 
what's going to, of course, like these uh, original settings are all active. And um, you might notice that um, all of these effects have uh, a lot of parameters. And sometimes it's just hard to figure out which one are useful, what combinations might be working best for you. So um, for this, we have presets, tons and tons of presets. So, um, and to see them, you can always use the Alt key here and press them and hover over these presets to get a feeling of what they actually do. We see, um, yeah, we have qu quite a variety here. Um, so maybe we also want to uh, pick this mirror repeat here. Okay, it doesn't have that many, but here the preset uh, the d this place has. And of course, well, fractal noise also has a bunch of presets. Um, so um, sometimes it's just hard to figure out what these presets will look like. For this, we can actually enable something called uh, render live previews here. And then we will see, if we zoom in here, that um, this will generate images that uh, will match roughly the final output. And it will do this for uh, all these things. So uh, if you go in here, we see that this place has uh, quite a lot of different uh, looks, but um, the previews will help us to uh, explore them. And then especially here, uh, when it comes into colors, so this is really, uh, I think, quite uh, quite useful to have this. Um, so we also can enable this preview on hover mode. However, I think that in a live scenario, this, uh, although it's convenient, it sometimes is disruptive because you uh, you keep scrolling over this window and then like it will be irritating to have this in a live set. So I personally disable the live preview here. Another thing to notice that is that uh, for certain effects, like um, let's say we take this guy here and we add an advanced feedback and we use this as a source. Um, so once again, the advanced feedback comes with tons and tons of uh, different uh, presets here that will all have uh, an interesting effect on the result. So if we zoom in here, we can see how certain things are happening in, the, in this effect. Um, but um, if you're using live previews, this will interfere with the feedback effect because it will reset the buffer and then the simulation will start from scratch. So if I now will update uh, the, uh, the, the parameters here, the previews, then um, yeah, sometimes this is this will just cause glitches. So um, um, yeah, we don't need it. Um, so we can disable uh, live runner thumbnails in this case. Okay, so now we talked about presets. Remember presets are settings for a certain type. Yeah? Fractal noise, displays, mirror repeat. Snapshots, however, are presets for this patch for the current for the current composition this media example spy thing uh, two thing and to use it we have to first flag parameters or uh, not parameters uh, operators uh, for being used with uh, blending snapshots the reason for this is if we don't do this uh, it will interfere with let's say interactive operators like these MIDI controller patches there, which is sometimes not what we want. So um, to select these, we um, right click, uh, or if we just we, we click, we select a bunch of operators here, we right click and then there will be this enable for snapshots. And you might notice that all of these get like the small little blue indicator there to say, yes, we have snapshots available for that. Then we can switch to the snapshot tab here and save a snapshot. So just by clicking plus and we will call this default. You might notice that um, 
this thing just turned green. I will talk about this in a second. So, um, you know, why would this be useful? Um, so let's say we want to explore with different settings here. So maybe we want to find something that's less disruptive here. So maybe increase the scale uh, to something uh, a little bit better. And maybe we uh, decrease the displacement here. And maybe we find, um, maybe we go into the mirror pad, uh, a mirror repeat, add a little bit of shading and um, rotate the image here. And then maybe we go in here and uh, experiment with various options we have here. So let's say, oh, maybe we find something a little bit more beautiful. So um, maybe also, uh, change the type of um, of the fractal noise to something more, uh, yeah, more beautiful. Then we can go into the snapshot and save another snapshot and call this, uh, let's call it nice idea. And um, so now you can quickly jump between these, which is already nice in a live preset, uh, live preview, but you can actually blend between these by holding Alt and then just hovering over these. And um, this is already super nice, but notice that you can actually, uh, if you select these both, you can you can actually extend beyond the blending here, which is like super nice because you can exaggerate a certain uh, parameter set. You can also do this by selecting just one and holding Alt, and this will blend into this preset. So if you're on the first, first right side, it will be uh, completely applied. On the left side, it will be the original state. And then you can actually, how you say, it, subtract that preset from the original set, which is also super nice to explore certain parameter sets. And then of course, um, you can go in here and create many, many more presets. You can always like save whatever you have here. So if you say like, ah, this looks kind of interesting, then you can always save this as a new preset. Interesting. And um, of course, you noticed like all of these, uh, number, like all of these buttons here are not green, but we can turn them green by just pressing them. And then this will be a, a new preset. So in a live set or while exploring, like pressing this button and actually renaming everything is a, a little bit of cumbers, like it's cumbersome, but uh, with the with a launch controller like the APC mini, so this gets way more convenient. And then you basically start exploring. So you go in here and say like, okay, if like this, um, if this, text would be smaller and um, if the fractal noise would be bigger and if the displacement would be uh, less harmful and if we find uh, something a little bit less feedback here so maybe we find something that's like oh, let's see what this actually looks kind of interesting and then maybe we can go in here and uh, say we also adjust the colors here for the, can we actually do this? So maybe uh, something, yeah, I mean, I, I think it really looks like a tiger, doesn't it? So maybe we call this tiger preset or we just, just press here. So this is now a tiger preset. And then we can uh, go in here and switch between them. Um, you see, I accidentally pressed this button. So if you press a bunch of buttons and they are all the same preset, which is um, can happen, of course, in a live set, then you can clean them up by holding this button here and we see it's flashing red. And then we can go in here and remove these. So, um, so that this means you can actually really quickly align this. So I could activate this, move it there, 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 and then delete. Uh, all these and then this might be a nice setup to actually control your live set so this is actually how I'm working so um, I have like different parts of a live set and then like the columns are the different sets I want to play with and then most of the time I'm still you know we still have like this uh, MIDI controllers active 
So just that you have these doesn't mean that you are not playing with the other settings. So um, completely legit to still go in here and then have all of these combined. Um, yeah, so um, one more thing there is. Um, so we, we are exploring a bunch of options how to work with MIDI controller like that one. So one option is that you can enable um, what I would call parameter or snapshot blending, you could say. So if I um, press this button, the shift button here, and um, now, for instance, blend into this guy here, so nothing happens, but I can slowly pull up this slider to blend into that. And then I can disable this pre this mode and then go into another preset. And then I can disable it again by clicking it once, moving down the slider, and then shift, last final scene, and I can slowly go back into the tiger preset here. And of course, in a you know, like in a real life set, you would have all like audio react reactive stuff. So audio a little bit of audio reaction here, so you can actually see that. Um, so then we have a scale here, and then we we have the MIDI input, and then we add, and then we add the audio reaction as the second thing, and maybe we uh, we teach this one here with this slider. So um, and then we specify an audio input, external device, and then we pick um, I don't know like a microphone. Does this work? Do you see the microphone? No, we don't. So. Uh, be honest, I don't really know like which Microsoft microphones are actually working right now. Uh, I think I'm recording on this. Oh, okay. I like this one works. I hope I didn't interfere with the uh, with my recording here. But um, there you go. Uh, a lot about MIDI controllers and setups and uh, snapshots. I think this. Um, can be an awesome extension to any live set. Um, it's still in a making, so it's already pretty decent feature, I would say. But of course, we are still looking for a further way to explore that. So if you have any ideas, uh, any suggestions, join us on Discord. Remember, this tool is free, it's open source, it's made for you. Um, yeah, and we want to hear what you want to do with that. See you on Discord. Uh, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Bye.